player map, so Patience no doubt has a plan and a strategy here. Yeah, we are going to have that backdoor base this time around, so many favor stats if he wants to go for a similar build that, you know, a bunch of stalkers coming out early into a Nexus. Use that pressure, but either way, let's get into game number four right now. Here we are on Orbital Shipyard for game number four of match number four here, the round of eight. Here in the bottom of the map in the red, the Protoss player, it is Stats. And his opponent to the upper right in blue. For D Pixels, it is Patience. Nearly finding himself cut out of the winner's bracket 3-0, but fought back with a cool strategy in game three. Still needs to win two games in a row. Keep that winner bracket hope alive. Ooh, interesting kind of turn of events there. That probe did not get scouted until it got in here. Yeah. Uh, a little bit of an extra scout there by Patience. Wants to make sure no uh, proxies are coming down. Stats trying to sneak a game. Nothing like that. Is going to be safe and throw out that scout. And both players throwing down the Nexus at about the same time. Yeah, empty gas for a build uh, where you make the assimilator but make the Nexus. It's like a similar Nexus into mining the gas. Um, just kind of the build time it works out. Do it that way. So that's continuing to lurk around in this base and wants to see if Patience is going to gate or not yeah. after this. Back at the base of stats, he's actually walled off the ramp. Did not allow that scout to get in once again. And uh, is going to deny a bunch of vision with that. And also will help out if any adepts are coming along. Yeah, it's really common on this map because it's two player and the Russians is pretty short to just wall everybody out. Um, and obviously this can sometimes be a liability if you don't have a backup pile and things go awry. Uh, it's pretty rare, but it has happened before. It's a solid way to open things, but it does kind of keep you also trapped within your own base that Adept comes out. So that's why it's really important that Stats doesn't lose this scouting probe. Gets a lot of information with it, but when it comes to the information wars, a huge lead right now for Stats. He knows everything that Patience is doing, and Patience knows nothing about what he's doing. Well, he did have to leave the base before this Stargate is getting up, but again, he doesn't have any wall there, so Stats going to attempt to get this Adept all the way up that ramp. Looks like there might be Ooh. a tight wall, though, just yep. in time. Just in time. Very nicely done. That's going to be two extra gates at the back of this Stargate that's coming up. So it's going to be three gates Stargate coming in here for Patience. And you did see that probe posturing perhaps make a third Nexus. Blink coming up for stats instead of, you know, Dark Shrine tech. I was kind of feeling like he might go for that, but... He's been using it a lot in this series already, but he decides not to. Blink is definitely more standard and really better choice in this case. Uh-oh. Move commanding there for a bit. This is actually going to be a win for Patience if he doesn't shade away. And actually, even with the shade, he's being chased. So this will actually be a dead adept. Meanwhile, Patience is Mothership, score, Mothership Core scouting. As a enough for a recall. He's going to come in here, see the two extra gates in the robo, try to take out one probe. Uh, fails to do so. This adept chase is still ongoing, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> don't forget about this. That is going to be a dead adept. This is what the Korean commentators love. It's like when I watch, uh, you know, League of Legends in Korea, it's like always they want to watch the two tanks fighting in top lane. I'm like, yeah, it's, is guys. this really entertaining to you guys, really? I'd rather him just pull up the units lost tab and click on the adept like that died later. <laughs> Um, I'm only teasing, of course. I never watched League of Legends. I hate all other games. Yeah, we've never server. watched that game before, actually. Uh, not it's not, it's not like about. it's you know uh, one of the most popular games in Korea and very culturally attached to it. Oh, a lot no. of our good friends commentating or anything like that. We would never, though, support them or watch that game. <laughs> now, there is a Dark Shrine finally coming up for stats here. It's going to have to 
uh, kill his own pylon to get out and secure that third nexus, which is still blocked by that pylon. Very smart moves here by Patience. This is going to be five stalkers, six total. And look at this at the same time an Oracle comes in. This is perfect timing. Blink is going to be able to push this back, though, fortunately. Uh, nice timing for stats as well. Great opportunity, and now Patience is going to be able to shade through. Oh, and he gets the pro that's going to deny this Nexus for so, so long. He's also got the pylon there. Meantime, he's about to get his own third Nexus. And a really interesting um, choice of unit coming out of the Stargate of Void Ray is on the way, which gives me the impression he's scared of just a big Blink Stalker, uh, you know, timing at his third base. So he wants to make sure he has it a little bit more, like, durability to hold a push like that because he has such a large economic lead. He knows Stats has to push across the map now. And he can even use these DTs for Archons if he wants to get really technical and fancy with this push. Well, Oracle comes in now and scouts the timing of this third and is going to look to catch any of these probes that are out of position, possibly. And in the meantime, Stats putting out a bit of pressure. He sees the Void Ray, the Immortal, and he's just like, oh, Okay, I guess I uh, can't do much for now. Oh, he doesn't see the Dark Shrine, but this Dark Shrine may actually be a saving grace for stats in this game because he needs to find an angle here. Just checking, he does have an Observer, he does have another one on the way, just blind. So he's gonna have two Observers out by the time these DTs hit. Well, let's see how good his response time is because these are gonna be split between multiple bases. In fact, he could go all three. Looks like he's gonna go two in the main and one at the third base. Oh, and an immediate pull here. He should be very, very ready. A couple of overcharges gonna come down. This other DT though getting a lot of kills in the third. That was kind of a late pull there by Patience, a bit of a mistake. So, in fact, gonna do a nice bit of damage for stats. Yeah, um, only losing one DT as well, eight probe kills. Kind of puts him back into the game. Now this uh, Void Raid nearly misses the War Prism, so that's always gonna be a threat he has out there. And don't forget, he still has Blink Tech. Now the question is going to be, oh, well, I was gonna say, the question is gonna be when, who's gonna take uh, robotics Bay first, but Stats is adding five more gates. Yeah, it's not going to be him. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to answer that question. Yeah. Uh, he is going to be going for a big attack here, uh, looking to end this one, possibly as Patience looks to make that transition. He's going to get charged at the same time and look to go uh, charge lit with some Archons in the back. Oh, when you look at the supplies, Patience is way up in an army supply. So you would think an attack like this would really struggle to work. Okay, he's changed his mind here. He's actually now adding a Templar Archives, a Forge, and Charge. But I don't think that... Um, I don't think he's in a good place either way, basically. Like, attacking was probably going to be the worst choice, but even still, now he's going to have Archon Tech versus Disruptor Tech, which Patience has now decided to add with a second Robo. Yeah. Well, we do have that Templar Archives finished up. So we'll probably see some of those Archons making their way onto the battlefield. Meanwhile, uh, second Robo for Patience, looking to bolster that army. Stats, um, sorry to cut you off, Stats and Stork, both really liking Storm Drops in Legacy, so there's a possibility he researches Storm here, but I just don't think he has the money for it right now. Yeah, and hasn't gotten that just yet. Looks like he's just going to go for this composition and try to just mack her up on four bases say, hey, I, I can uh, delay back. You can't really uh, attack me right now, so it should be totally fine. Loses the Oracle. That's kind of unfortunate there. Charge is complete. And if he just sits on charge, he can't hold this fourth base. But, you know, I've, I've commentated some PvPs. I've watched a lot of PvPs in Legacy, mostly foreign PvPs, to be honest, because we haven't had a huge plethora of PvPs in Korea. I've seen all the ones that we have had, but, you know, I'd say about half the PvPs I watch are 400 PvPs. I don't know exactly how this interaction is going to work with Disruptors versus Charged Zealots because it's really hard to hit a Charged Zealot with that Purification Nova because it's simply going to run through it a lot of the time. But if you Yeah, unless they're like bunched up and not attacking, I think it's going to be very hard to go for that. Look at this wall that Patience already has up and running. That is going to be very, very effective against those Charged Zealots and the Archons. Yeah, and if the Zealots use their charge, on the buildings, they're going to end up being locked in a circle where the disruptors, you know, could just blow them up. I actually like Patience's comp a lot better, but again, I don't know yet how well this is going to work. Oh, <laughs> oh, look at that, slipping in. Two Zealots and a couple of DTs with another warp in now. 
going immediately for those pylons. Ooh, losing a big chunk there to a disruptor, actually. Yep. Actually unpowers the robo, which is pretty huge, and he will actually snipe this fourth base. Patience slow on the draw there on the cancel as well. Doesn't get that one finger discount. He's actually going to lose 400 minerals for free, but this is not the right way to path your units past. Yeah, but either way, he's really pulling and uh, pushing patience around the map right now because he's got his fourth base up. He forced the entire army back into a defensive position that could not defend the fourth base at the same time. So now he's going to move into disruptors, get that you know more formidable late game army we were talking about with the disruptors, and just defend his bases because is, uh, now he's got the lead in the economy. This is the music that plays when it goes to late game PvP. Like, it's like... Yeah, it's really nice, It's actually, actually pretty <laughs> epic. Okay, we go. We're at... And, and it is weird to say late game at 10 minutes and 45 seconds with the new Blizzard timer, but here we go! Disruptor shot number Ooh. one going to wipe a huge amount of Zealots off the map, and that's going to end this push. Yeah, he's got plenty more where that came from. That's exactly what I was talking about. Dispensing up the Zealots and not attacking. It can be very easy to hit that Disruptor shot. This one going to do a number that on was, those Zealots. That was some really cool reaction and control by patience, I have to say. He like almost got the DT too. <laughs> Look at this disruptor. Oh man. Sad. So disruptor. sad. Oh. They go down there, but patience is gonna respond by moving across the map, looking for the army now. He knows he's got the better army composition. Oh yeah, and stats is gonna be terrified to look at this army. Massive, better upgraded plus two, soon to be plus three blink stalkers. Six disruptors, he even has two void rays in there. And let me tell you, they will do a number on these stalkers of stats. The Archons basically useless versus such a ranged unit composition. They're just gonna get focused down immediately. He's even got adepts in here. Here come the disruptors, a huge shot on all of the adepts. Is it gonna be enough to defend though? I think Stats is definitely going to lose his fourth base. In the meantime, Stats has split up his army. Uh, Patience himself is going to lose his own fourth base. But uh, again, the army composition here for Patience still looking a bit better. I have to say, I feel like when it comes to um, the situation in the game, I think Stats knows exactly where he's at right now. And he's playing the overall better game when it comes to like controlling rotations around the map. But his unit comp is making him basically play this game on hard mode. Like he has to beat an army comp that's better than his until he can fill that same role, like until he gets his own disruptors out, he's making two at a time. He's yeah. trying to reset his army into that better comp while harassing, and I think his harassment is really paying off. He might even just kill his prism. Look at that. Yep, and he's gonna get that. Now, look at the army of patience totally out of position, chasing that small chunk out on the map that took out the fourth base, and that's not even really gonna matter. Now Stets has got a fantastic position here in the third base, of patience, and he can retreat if he wants to, but he's got a nice concave, he's got disruptors of his own. Oh, but he's going for the disruptors of his opponent. The Archon's taking damage here. Oh! oh. Gets one. Gets oh. one, there's more coming. Here we go, a huge hit there on those Stalkers of Stats. Patience now has a huge army lead, and I think he needs to take that advantage and push with it hard right now. He's gonna blink on top of these disruptors, targeting them down. Big disruptor shot coming in there. But again, as you said, another one coming in, a blink, and he misses, in fact. He blinks over it, and, you know, this is uh, hot sh hopscotch meets dodgeball here <laughs> in PvP. A huge wave of disruptors, all those rally disruptors out of the Robos have not been sent to the army. He needs them desperately here. It's actually 6v6 when it comes to disruptor counts. Stats will take out this base, but the other fourth at the 9 o'clock position is still fully mining. Yeah, look at this, just another ragtag group of Stalkers coming in, plus one DT. And Patience right now just can't attack, he can't fight this. And at the top of the ramp of the third base of Stats, he's got a very nice defensive position. This is going to force a really awkward spot for Patience, where he goes all the way back, and he's lost so much mining time. And even if he goes all the way back, and even if he kills all of these units, you know, the amount of time he spends doing this gives Stats more money and more time. Now, one of the reasons why these fights are going so one-sided for Patience is because he has plus three for his Blink Stalkers and Stats does not. He's getting that up right now. It's on the way. Oh, look at this. Just wait about 30 seconds. Stats is looking for another attack into that third base. The army, once again, Patience is going all the way to the top left and he's going to be totally out of position for this again. Oh man, even an offensive Blink, he's going to regret that right about now. 
He is out of money. He's actually losing all of his probes now. He's got a few more warp and some units left to make, and then that's going to be it for him for the rest of this game. He will have to walk across the map and kill stats. And he's tried to do that several times, but has been sent back home at every turn. And uh, I got to say, this is his opportunity. We've seen patients play games like this all night. We know it's like every game I'm watching him, he has to win the game, or if it fails, it's over. He doesn't yeah. have any transition point here. This is going to be the game deciding fight. Disruptor shot. Oh, disruptors, no! Oh, He's going to lose two of them. No. Really nice split there from stats at the same time, and all the disruptors are going to go down here for patience. He has, he lost all of them. He has not a single disruptor left. He can't win this fight anymore, and he has no money. Stats is going to just keep warping in stalkers to the north and keep hitting his only mining base, which is almost mined out, mind you. At the same time, he's got another group coming into the third base. Probes fighting this, plus the plus three advantage, should win that for patience. But look at all these disruptors. You can't play forever against this. No, you definitely can't, because every time you're on cooldown, this happens. He's got way more purification numbers where that one came from, too. Another one goes down. Good barrier there on the Immortals. He blinks forward. There are Void Rays in this army, and he's just simply trying to push his way on top of these disruptors while they're on cooldown. Could this be his moment? He blinks forward again. He's actually jumping through his compatience to actually win this game. This is insane. It's so unbelievably close, and those two disruptors are going to go down. He has a 20 army supply lead. He needs to win a another big fight now. I think maybe even going for the army instead of this base is the better choice. He is giving stats more time. This base is still oh, unscouted. Man. He doesn't know about it. He's still unscouted, and patience doesn't have much of an economy. Stats just needs to delay. Losing any unit at this point in time will not help out Patience. He's just going to take out this base. And as you said before, he doesn't know it about the other base. His economy is one-tenth that of stats right now. Plus three done for both players. Those two Void Rays are worth so much right now with Stalker versus Stalker. Yeah. They're so useful. Think about that Void Ray choice early on in the game just to help for defense. It's helping out so much now in this late game. Oh, man. One DT coming over here. This is going to be the end of the economy. Or patience. He has so much gas, he can make a lot of Archons. Okay, he has that Immortal now isolated. He could actually target it down. Okay, Void Rays use their Overcharge or their Prismatic Alignment, but DT's finally cleaned up here by Probes, mind you. Look at that. Ten times the economy of patience. He's going to be destroyed. He's already ahead in army supply. The one advantage patience had was his army was bigger. It's not anymore. Yeah, he, I feel like he's just lost too much time. If he can somehow fight and dodge, well, at this point, even Stats has got more Stalkers. I think he's just run out of time at this point. Oh, four sentries coming in. He's, like, trying to spend all the gas he can, but it won't matter. Targets down both Disruptors, and the Void Rays are still in the army, but they're fighting an Archon, which is not what he wants. The Immortal goes down, and that'll finally be it. GG! Oh, man, well, what an unbelievable game there. From Stats and Pace, and definitely the highlight of the night. Show that one to your friends, and Stats 100% earns his victory ticket into the round of four with that play. That was sick. Oh, man. Patience is engaged when he didn't have any disruptors. His control and his his knowledge of the cooldowns and when he could move in and attack, using those Void Rays, piecing everything together was incredible. But it is Stats who takes the win. We'll win it 3-1 tonight. And we'll actually advance to the winner's bracket. Yeah, so we'll start, I believe. I believe so, but let's go into this interview first. See what Stats has to say. Very, very close match. It was quite nervous throughout all of the sets. Of the sets. My mind just kind of went blank uh, after that set. My mind would be blank after that one too. And he doesn't even know where he is now. Did you practice during the holidays? He took a big breath. Back in practice much. He took a big breath. Back in practice much. I started practicing on the 10th. 
한 다섯 판 정도 하니까 손이 다시 그 설날 지내기 전그 손으로 다시 돌아가지고 네 오늘 경기 자신 있었어요. 그냥 얘기 안 해볼 수 없을 것 같아요. 사실 이렇게 막 프로토스에서 대박이 터지는 유닛하고는 사실 김대엽 선수가 인연이 좀 없었어요 전부터. 근데 오늘 경기로 확실히 분열기와의 인연까지 잡았다는 느낌을 받았는데 어떠셨나요? 어 so, 일단 정말 운이 좋았던 것 같고요. <웃음> 그때 분열기를 분열기 제가 대박을 냈을 때그 so, 화면이 제가 먼저 포착을 했어요. 네. 그래가지고 그 분열기 그 구슬을 날리려고 하는데 손이 너무 떨려가지고 안 움직이는 거예요. The, uh, 그래서 살짝 좀 늦게 <웃음> 보내면서 좀 걱정이 좀 많았는데 like, 다행히 like, just, it was really rough for him and his hands were shaking so he's making some micro mistakes. 제가 대박을 낼수 있었던 um, 있었던 것 같아요. 스타리그랑 상당히 좀 인연이 깊습니다. 김대웅 네. 선수님 운이 없었어요. 승자 4강이라서 완벽한 4강이라고 볼 수는 없겠지만 그래도 스타리그 내에서 김대웅 선수가 우승 말고 지금 정말 하이 커리어예요. 어떻게 생각하시나요? 어, 일단은 다시 한번 이렇게 어, 사, 그 완전 4강은 아니지만 승자 4강에 올라가가지고 like really 굉장히 뿌듯하게 생각하고 있고요. 어, 이제 새해도 다시 왔으니까 이번에는 결승무대 꼭 밟아보고 싶어요. 네. 4강, 승자 4강의 대진이 소명의 저주와 그리고 이에 맞서는 so 유일한 프로듀스의 김태엽이거든요. 앞선 그 박용호 선수와의 경기를 김도우 선수와의 경기 어떻게 관전하셨나요? 어... <웃음> That's what he thought about classics. So, uh, game. 정말 다시 한번 사기라는 걸 느꼈고요. 배울 땐 이거 중간에 패치가 되지 않으면은 Once again, 어, 이기더라도 3대 2인 스코어로 되게 힘겹게 <웃음> 이기지 않을까 이렇게 생각이 듭니다. 네, 최근에 어떤 그 종종으로 감세가 저그가 토스를 잡아 먹는 거라고 생각을 하시는 거죠? 네, 물론이죠. 네. 그럼 어떤 점으로 물론 이제 패치가 이루어지지 않겠습니다만 단순히 <웃음> 아니라 <웃음> 뭐가 가장 그큰 걱정인가요? 일단은 대멸승도 솔직히 좀 정말 강력하고요. <웃음> 러커도 정말 모으면 모일수록 정말 강력한 유닛이어가지고 어, 그것들을 잘좀 이렇게 파회 좀 타개해 나갈 이런 방법을 찾지 않으면은 좀 이번 4강전부터는 좀 힘들 것 같아요. 스타리그 게시판에 이런 글이 올라왔어요. JHM2 러브님께서 이 톤으로 읽어드려야 될것 같아요. 김대엽 선수 결승할 수 있습니까? 있습니다. 네 여러분 김대엽 선수에게 큰 박수 부탁드립니다. 네 이렇게 해서 스타리그 2016 시즌 1 마지막 승자 4강 진출자 김대엽 선수까지 만나봤고요. 그럼 오늘 경기 결과 함께 만나보시죠. In Star League so far, in my opinion, because I love PVP. That PVP was just so much fun, and uh, Dark really showing his strength in the matchup. Uh, say what you want about Zerg, Dark is uh, obviously playing very well. Kind of has got it figured out, uh, at least uh, against Classic. We'll see how he does against Stats. Here is our winners bracket. Yeah, Ragnarok versus Solar, and then Dark versus Stats on the other side of it. And then down here in losers, see if I can say this really fast. Alive versus Bjell, Hurricane versus... Oh! Oh, <laughs> oh here, here they are. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Alive versus Bjell, Hurricane versus Bjell. Sue will face off against Patience, um, who just lost that match. And then Sulky will face off against Classic. No doubt Classic's really happy to face another Zerg. Yeah, uh, I'm sure he's really going to enjoy that matchup, especially because, if I read it correctly, it was a best of three in the losers matchup so yeah i think that's how i got confused about today being best of three yeah. as well so uh we'll we'll cheer for classic see what he can do there uh but overall it's been a it's been a great day i really enjoyed uh both of the matchups yeah i'm glad you're back i'm glad it's gonna be us for star league now like it like the mm. old days i miss moonlight of course still yeah. really sad that he decided Rip to leave pepperonis, moonlight. yeah um but i miss him a lot if you're watching moonlight we miss you man um, but yeah, it's it's been a great day and good cast with you again. It feels like I've brought back some sort of familiarity <laughs> here back on the casting desk. Yeah, well, I'm really either, enjoying it. Either way, guys, uh, we both enjoyed it. It's been a great night. Thanks for joining us once again. We'll be back for SSL next Thursday, and we got Pro League on Monday and Tuesday as well. So join us there for more Korean StarCraft. But for tonight, we'll see you later.